from beautiful Nashville, Tennessee, the Puma American Track League season continues here on a sunny Saturday in the Music City. Welcome to Vanderbilt University and the 2023 Music City Track Carnival, where today the only thing hotter than the weather will be the races. Alongside our co-meet director, as well as our resident Canadian Olympian, Kate Van Buskirk, Serenity Douglas, who will join us on the field later on. My name is Will Bowling. It's a hot Saturday here in the Music City, but Kate, like we mentioned, these races are going to be terrific. They're going to be absolutely fantastic. We kicked things off last night with what is really the origin story of this meet. It used to be the Music City Distance Carnival. Now, of course, it's grown in maturity in its 21st year. It, it, it's celebrating its birthday this year to include the field events and the sprints. We had some hot action on the track last night. We're going to continue some of that mid-distance action with the 800s, the 1500 meter showdowns today. But well, last night, all eyes were on that beautiful elevated pole vault runway when Casey Lightfoot took to the pole vault. Yeah, as you see the meet schedule here, that has been the story of our competition, which began yesterday afternoon here in Nashville. A new American record in the pole vault, 6 meters 7, 19 feet 11. Casey Lightfoot is number one in the world in 2023 and the best American ever to do it. And what a vault. He was thrilled with that. It was absolutely terrific, electrifying a great crowd here last night as the fans make their way here onto the track side at Vanderbilt University. And we get you ready for our first race, which is the women's 800 Coming up here in just a couple of minutes, we've got Olympians, we've got elite high schoolers, we've got college runners, we've got a little bit of everything for you here from Nashville. The 800 is up first when we come back at the Music City Track Carnival. It is the 2023 Music City Track Carnival presented by Puma. Here at the Puma American Track League, the 2023 season well underway as we get you ready for our first race here on the track, the Women's 800. We've got nine athletes, we've got a pacer, and we have got a great field ready to go as they're off and running. Olivia Baker, Allie Wilson, Sabrina Sutherland, Brenna Dietra, 
Emily Richards, Charlene Lipsy, Shafiqua Maloney, Esther Sealand, Susan Ajori, paced by Rachel Walters, who Kate is scheduled to bring them through in 57 to 57 and a half. Well, this meet, again, being held in Nashville each year, is renowned for not only being hot on the track, but also having almost no wind readings, which is what we like. Keeps it a little warmer, but it makes for great racing, great times. And I think that 57 and a half is absolutely perfect. This really is the Atlanta Track Club showdown between Olivia Baker and Ali Wilson. Of course, several other of their athletes here as well. But those are our two 158 and change runners in the field. Of course, Wilson fourth at the 2022 U.S. Championships, ran two flat at L.A. last week, and Olivia Baker was fifth at that U.S. meet a year ago. And Wilson, you can't miss her right at the front with that blonde hair bobbing in the wind, leading the way uh, right ahead of Emily Richards. At the halfway point, they go 57-84 right on schedule for Walters. Wilson was 58-09 and tightly packed so you can tell that these women are ready to run fast that's a hot opening quarter and they are looking fantastic as Allie Wilson starts to stretch things out down the back you've got Wilson and Richards Baker is in there too Brenna Dietra on the inside who was fourth here in this meet last year and fourth in the U.S. indoors Wilson's done the hard work here in the sun in Nashville taking this thing out from the very start trying to go wire to wire here in our women's 800. She's running really bravely. She's been doing a lot of that over the last year. It's so good to see athletes taking things out when they know that not only are fast times important, but World Athletics points are on the line thanks to this meet's inclusion in that World Athletics Continental Tour Silver status meet. So Allie Wilson trying to put on the finishing touches with Lipsy coming on strong here on the outside and Charlene Lipsy with Wilson at the line. It will be Wilson finishing strongly enough and getting under two minutes in the process. 159-24, a new season's best for the 27-year-old American. Will, I believe that's also an MCTC meet record. So this Mondo track at Vanderbilt is blazing fast and we're seeing that already with our first meet record of our pro sections. Charlie Lipsy was second in 159.26. A personal best for Susan Ajori of Kenya, who runs 159.51. Personal best for Brenna Dietra as well for fourth. That was an excellent finish for our nine women taking two laps around the track here at Vanderbilt. It may be, Kate, a good sign that the weather and the sun is not going to take away the potential for fast times on this fast track. That's right, and there you can see that reflected in those results. When it takes 201 to get into the fast section, you know that it's going to be fast. Four women under two minutes, four of them at 159, and I, I agree with you, Will. This is a sign of good things to come. So we are hoping to hear from Ali Wilson and Serenity Douglas here in just a moment. Our first winner of the afternoon. As Ali Wilson takes the women's 800. Here's Serenity. That's right. And Ali did so good today, but it was the season's best for you and possibly a meet record. How are you feeling about your race? Pretty good. Um, yeah, I have been kind of disappointed with how my race is have been going. So... I went in there today with the mindset of I was just going to control it. And, I mean, it was a battle to finish, and I'm lucky to have strong competitors like the girls in that race to push me. And I definitely think that's why it was the season's best, because they pushed me all the way the line. And what meet is next for you? I'll be running the New York Grand Prix in, I think, three weeks. All right, congrats, Ellie. Thank you. Back to you, Will. So here is the finish again as Allie Wilson just barely takes it at the line ahead of Charlene Lipsy. And, and you mentioned it, Kate. That's a brave run there, taking that thing out from the start uh, and running a very fast time here in Nashville. You know, again, I said it earlier, but Wilson's been running a lot that way recently. And I think that's, that's how you have to run, especially, you know, one of the beautiful things about this meet is that it offers some of the best competition domestically. You don't get that all that often. Um, the American Track League, again, thanks to the partnership with Puma, really helps make that happen. And you got to take advantage of every opportunity you've got. We've got world championships coming up in less than two months, and the clock's ticking. Certainly is. And you mentioned that was kind of the Atlanta classic here 
uh, in Nashville. And I, I always feel like it's important for us to, to give a tip of the cap to Atlanta Track Club and the job that they've been able to do building that large just running community, not only in the city of Atlanta, but just here in the south now. It seems like everywhere we go in the Puma American Track <laughs> League, we're seeing Baker and Wilson and, and all those other spectacular runners uh, whose names you'll be hearing as the night continues. That's right. And again, they take turns doing pacing jobs for each other. Also such a great role. So Really awesome to see those women and uh, and their men as well running so well. Uh, and I got to just give a quick shout out to Charlene Lipsy there yeah. too. Um, she's she and I have been competing against each other for many many years, um, and she's always a fierce competitor. So help push that field again to su four sub two minute performances. So up next on the track we have the A section of the men's 800 meter run, where again just like the women we've got nine runners scheduled to compete few collegiate runners and a big group of pros and let's start here with Alex Amonqua Kate who will wear hip number one 31 year old from Ghana who was seventh at the prestigious Commonwealth Games last year that's right and that that puts you in some pretty uh, esteemed company again you know it's sort of that one level down from that Olympic and world championship level but absolutely thrilling to see him back here he likes running uh, here in Nashville and has done lots of it in the past so he's gonna put on a good show again he's gonna be in some excellent company being pushed by so many of these very fast men there is the full start list for you there and we're also looking at hip number three Brandon Miller who is still just 19 years old Kate and it feels like he's been around forever because he was so terrific as a high schooler the 2022 NCAA indoor champion. Again, this is the one of the great things about this meet is that it brings together those who are just recently out of sort of that sometimes high school, often collegiate world and bridging that gap into pro. And then you have these veterans and it's neat to get a sense of the camaraderie that happens on the track and the field with those different levels of experience. Um, you know, Casey Lightfoot's a young guy and he was out there uh, sort of years beyond his experience, even offering some encouragement to uh, to guys much older and more ex experienced than him. So you get you get everything at the Puma American Track League. So four men from UA Mission Run, Baltimore 800, and Alex Amonqua, Vincent Crisp, CJ Jones, and Ido Zibedin. A quartet of men who are regulars here at MCTC. So again, they're looking for 144.7 for World Champ Standard and 146.25 for that U.S. Champ Standard. Off and running in the men's 800-meter run here in Nashville. Alex Amanqua wearing hip number one. 19-year-old Brandon Miller from the United States in the middle of this group as well. It is going to be a quick one. And let's hope for as many personal bests in the men's 800 as we saw in the women's race just a moment ago. As Vincent Crisp with number two on his side, third at the U.S. Indoor Championships in 146, goes to the front here. Well, again, we kick things off with some uh, pretty great excitement on the women's side with four women under two minutes and an MCTC meet record. We're going to try to see if we can get as close to that as possible for these men. And they are running very fast, strung out already at the 300-meter mark. Paced by Devante Wilson in the gold and blue of Lipscomb. That is C.J. Jones taking this thing through. Pacer came through in 51-34. And now they're really starting to roll. That was just a little bit off of what they were looking for, hoping for sort of that 50 mid, so just outside that range. But you can see how fast these guys are running. You can't even get them all in that shot. And there is some real separation happening in our top two. And you've got Brandon Miller right up front there with C.J. Jones, Vincent Crisp making up the final of that first trio as Miller goes to the outside. The former NCAA champion running neck and neck with C.J. Jones. We're going to have two great finishes in our first two races as they make the turn for home. The men's 800 with Brandon Miller side by side with C.J. Jones. Miller in the light blue. Here comes Amonqua on the outside, pushing at the perfect time. And Alex Amonqua will take it. And 145.12, so another huge set of results in our second event of our pro section of this 2023 Music City Track Carnival. Season's best for each of the top three. Make that the top five even. All running season's best for Alex Amonqua. His outdoor debut. Here in the 800, and here's a look at that finish. Well, and he came up 
real late in that race. You could have thrown a blanket over all five of them with about 70 meters to go, but a beautiful finish by him, perfectly timed, and he's using every inch of that height to his advantage to power across that line. He looks real happy. So Alex Amanqua, the 31-year-old, is our winner in the Pro Men's 800. We've got a couple more heats of these that are happening later and earlier today. This is our fastest section. Alex Amanqua is our winner, and he's downstairs with Serenity. Alex, that was a nice little season best for you, but you made a late surge the last 100. Was that the race plan? Uh, yeah, it was the race plan all the way through. Uh, I've been working on my last 200, so I'm happy. Got the win, so, yeah. All right, and what's next for you? Uh, going to take a week off. I've been traveling for about two, three weeks, and then we got a meet in Baltimore that I'm excited about. Hopefully get the standard there, get to Worlds, and, you know, try to make some shake. Was this exactly what you were looking for today? Uh, it's a bit, bit better than I thought because I was hurt uh, from January through March, and I've only been training for two and a half months, so I didn't think I'd run this fast as early. But I'm happy, really happy. All right, things are looking good. Congrats. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Well. All right, thank you, Serenity. And again, another look here at this finish where Alex Amonqua left it so late, but really, I, I think, trailed for, what, 785 of those 800 meters? It's only the last 15 that counts. That's right, absolutely. And that was, again, very smart running by him, kind of swinging wide and uh, slingshotting off of that corner and giving himself lots of space to get cleanly across the line for another very strong win in our second race of the pro section. So up next on the track, it is the first of our two high school miles. We've got 13 terrific high school girls ready to run here in just a couple of minutes. That's scheduled for a 2.20 start. And the high school boys to follow them. And lots of the top talent, Kate, not only from the South, but from all across the country. We've got Alabama, Virginia, Florida, Illinois, Colorado, Arkansas, all represented. And this, to me, is my favorite part of this meet, the fact that high schoolers get to share the track with uh, Olympic hopefuls and Olympic gold medalists who we're going to see later on who were just on it a minute ago. Well, and to your point, there's our start list with all of those uh, different states listed. One of the really fun things that happens here is that the bib numbers, if you look closely, will have um, their name, and then it'll also have a flag of their state. Nice. Um, same with the internationals. They'll have their country flag represented. I think at last count, Will, we had 24 states represented and 41 countries. So that shows you kind of the, the, the depth, not only nationally, domestically, but also, of course, across the world. It's a lot of different flags to know and have ready for bibs. It sure is. is. <laughs> I won't tell you how the sausage gets made, but I learned a lot about flags in the last week. Absolutely. Well, uh, we're really looking forward to this. And uh, Katie McPhail, the senior from Chelsea High School out of Alabama, who is an Auburn signee and Alabama's top runner at 1,600 and 800, comes in with the best time in this field, converted down from the full mile at 446.58. That is terrific speed for the senior from Alabama. It sure is. It's incredibly impressive. And what's also impressive, speaking of depth, is that that New Balance Outdoor National Championship standard, which, of course, is taking place in just over a week's time, is 458 flat. Well, all but one of our top-seeded athletes have already gone under that. So that gives you a, a pretty good sense, to your point, about how some of the best in the country join each other here on Nashville's uh, beautiful track here at Vanderbilt to try to get the best out of themselves. So you can follow the Puma American Track League on Twitter and Instagram. We've got some great content there for you throughout the day and throughout the season, which continues on into a very busy World Championships summer, like Kate mentioned earlier, at Puma American Track League there on Twitter, American Track League on Instagram as well. Serenity Douglas, who you've heard from as our sideline reporter tonight, always doing a great job keeping the people updated. And there was vault side content last night from KC Lightfoot's American record. That's right. This is the second stop, we should say, on that Puma American Track League circuit. The next one, of course, is going to be back here in Tennessee. Yes. Slightly different uh, city. It's going to be in Memphis for the Ed Murphy Classic, another race, another meet, rather, that's had some uh, some incredible growth over the last several years and attracted some of the country and, and the world's absolute best talent. So be sure to follow those social handles and keep up with all the action from Tennessee and across the country. 
So these high school girls, milers, get on the track, ready to go. 13 of them, like we mentioned. Katie McPhail will wear hip number one. We've got Reese Dalton in there as well from Charlottesville, Virginia, and the Covenant School. Ranked second in the state of Virginia at 1,600 meters with a season's best of 451.82. She has a personal best from 2022 of 449. Eliana Black is a name to remember at high school distance running. The freshman from Cambridge Christian out of Tampa. She's ranked the fifth fastest freshman in the United States, running 448.83 earlier this year. And right beside her, you've got one of the top sophomores in the country in Barrington, Illinois' Scout Storms, who's run 450. Times ranging from 446 to 454. This one's going to be quick in the high school girls' mile. Off and running at the high school girls mile at the 2023 Music City Track Carnival where future Auburn Tiger Katie McPhail tries to make it a double this weekend, Kate, after a terrific 800 run last night. Well, she, again, talk about brave running, led out a stacked field and came away with a win in 208.96, pulling Jordan Bray along with her under that 210 mark at 209.24. So they've got a little bit of fatigue in their legs, but this is great practice for rounds, certainly through the high school and onto the, um, the collegiate season, and then, of course, pro if they choose to do that. They're being led out right now by, actually, a fellow Canadian. I know this woman very well, Adria Prop, who is an excellent runner in her own right, and she is wanting to keep this thing hot. And you mentioned that in, in practicing of running a first and second round, Katie McPhail will run in the SEC as an Auburn Tiger, and this will feel a lot like making an SEC championship final when she runs a, a, at the collegiate ranks, hopefully for her an NCAA meet as well, when it's a quick turnaround from a late night to maybe even middle of the day the, the next afternoon. Well, and again, you add the heat into that equation, and it can make things very difficult. But these women are going to learn really quickly how to do that very well. And uh, again, to your point about having the experience with the pros, with the collegiates mixed in with the high schoolers, there's uh, no wanting for lots of information sharing and, uh, and, and experience gathering here. So there you see through those 409 meters, that's Higgins, McPhail, Dalton, and Black, the top four. Malin Higgins, the future North Carolina Tar Heel from Broomfield High School out of Broomfield, Colorado, has a season's best at altitude of 459 and a personal best of 451. So uh, she could certainly factor into this one as well and has taken this thing out quickly. Well, and to take it out at 70 seconds or, or just under 71, you know, that, of course, if you do the quick math, that puts them all on personal best territory right around that 445, 444 mark. Prop doing a good job there of just checking in with the runners behind her, making sure she's not getting too far ahead. And you're seeing some real separation there, Will, about five girls kind of all eyeballing who wants to take the lead behind the pacer when she drops. That was McPhail, Dalton, Black, and Storms all following the leader, Malin Higgins from Colorado, making the cross-country trip here to the Volunteer State. They're halfway through. McPhail with hit number one, running on the rail in third right now, in good position where she really bided her time and picked the perfect moment to pounce in at 800 last night. 226.74 with two laps to go as the pace slows a bit right there. Well, and you can see that that sort of gathering of all of the athletes together again. This is always the danger when the pacer drops is that no one really wants to take it out, particularly when it's so hot. And again, we mentioned, but many of these girls have races from yesterday. You know, the mile is the beautiful equalizer between the, the 800 and the 3200. And we saw several of these athletes in one or the other of those events last night. So a little kind of cat and mouse game here, but you know, 500 meters to go was where my coach always said, you got to make a move. If you leave it too late, you're going to get caught. So 500 to go, and we'll see if there's some, some movement here as they approach that mark. And it's still in the same order with Higgins, Dalton, McPhail, Black, and Storms making up a close top five. Here with seven very quick high school girls milers making the turn for the 
next to last time here in Nashville under the 90 degree Saturday sun here in the south who makes that big push as going to the outside you've got the junior from Virginia Reese Dalton who's going to go side by side with Higgins at the bell 344 there unofficially with one to go pace slowing to 77 343 77 officially with a quarter left well and Katie McPhail squarely tucked in there I wouldn't want to be too slow going into the final 300 with a 208 gal we know she's got some speed, and as I say that, she starts to make a great move on the outside. At 300 to go, that looked like a very clear plan right there from Katie McPhail going to the outside shoulder of Reese Dalton, the junior out of Virginia. So it's the senior from Alabama, the junior from Virginia, where one and two. Scout Storms made a big push to get up there in that top three as well, but now the top two starting to break away by a step or two. Dalton leading McPhail. It's going to be another banner finish here as we begin Saturday afternoon in Nashville. McPhail, the future Auburn Tiger, trying to swing around a little bit to the outside, making a big push just like she did last night in the 800 as Katie McPhail, the fastest over the final lap, will win the high school girls mile here in Nashville right at 4.52, the winning time. So... Not anything necessarily to write home about in terms of their personal best, but look at that final lap, Will, 68 flat to close out what was otherwise a very tactical mile, and you can see that effort. Nice congratulations there from her competitors, but that always feels good. A double win on two different days. Hot track, hot crowd, great meet, and uh, hugs all around. And you mentioned some of the challenges when the pacer steps off. Uh, we take another look at the finish. These are a lot of high school runners who, who I would imagine are unfamiliar of what it's like to run with a pacer. That's right. And so I think sometimes, you know, it's, it's a, almost a little bit of a safety blanket. And then that comes away. And it's really difficult to be able to have the confidence to take, take on the, the rest of the charge at that point. And these girls and, and boys will learn how to do that with experience. Again, we saw that strong run by Allie Wilson to kick things off. But great results all the way across the board for this very talented field of high school girls. So that is your high school girls mile finishing up there in a very quick time here in the heat, especially. Katie McPhail winning at a half mile and as well at a mile here this afternoon in Nashville. So from one finish to another coming up here in just a minute, here's a, a, another look at just exactly when Katie was able to make her move. And great response on the inside there. That's always the thing when you feel someone coming up on your outside shoulder. Um, of course, McPhail just had the speed. I, I mentioned that she has the wheels. She kind of had the advantage of knowing that she could test things a little bit with 300 to go, still knowing she had another gear to shift to into that final home stretch. But uh, really strong response there on the inside as well by Reese Dalton. So the high school girls mile wraps up and we get you ready for the high school boys mile coming up next where again we have 13 runners scheduled to take four trips around the track here in Vanderbilt. And they are led by Gainesville, Georgia's Alexander Arambidi from East Forsyth High School, a Georgia Tech signee who Kate has run 4.06 this season ran a personal best for second place at his state championships down there in Georgia, ranked 11th in the United States going into the weekend. Absolutely blazing. And another really, really deep field. We've got four guys who have run under 410 this season already. And I got to tell you, pulling back the curtain a little bit here, one of the things that made this challenging for us uh, leading into the, the, the events was that so many of these guys and gals had been running their personal best a week ago, yeah, sometimes as, right. as early as five days ago. So they're all coming off of some of the strongest performances they've ever had, looking to capitalize on an opportunity to do it yet again. So Alexander Aaron Beattie leading this field that you see right there on your screen. You've got Dawson Reeves, Jr. from Arda, North Carolina, the Christ School, ran a personal best last weekend. Ranked number 11 as far as the class of 2024, running 409.61. Wearing hip number six, want to highlight Keegan Smith, the sophomore from Knoxville, Tennessee, and Knoxville Catholic. He is a two-time defending champion here in the state of Tennessee in the Division II AA classification. That's the large private schools in the state of Tennessee. He had an unbelievable week last week in Murfreesboro at the Tennessee State Meet and is looking to continue his summer and continue into cross-country offseason 
with another great run here in Nashville. You've got Simon Scabort from Rome, Georgia, wearing hip number five. He's a future Tennessee volunteer. Andrew Ballow from Woodstock, a Georgia signee. Miles Raymer from Brentwood, Tennessee, here from Ravenwood High School nearby, another Tennessee state champion. We have got an excellent field and a freshman from Cleveland High School to remember here. Owen Clemens wears hip number 12, the Tennessee state champion at 3,200 meters. He's run 414 as a freshman. Just unbelievable here, specifically in the state of Tennessee, <laughs> where uh, we've got a front row seat to uh, a state that is really... Uh, come into its own in distance running. That's right. Definitely leading the South when it comes to that. And I think we're going to see a great show because unlike we saw in the girls, very few of these guys raced last night in either the 8 or the 3200. So we've got some fresh legs. Again, almost no wind. Fast, hot track. This Mondo track is just so hard and fast. You know, that's not the best to train on necessarily because it can beat you up a little bit. But man, does it make for great races. So Mobile, Alabama junior Charles Perry from UMS Wright High School, who has a personal best of 409.46 that he ran last week down in his home state. He'll be on the outside right here of Dawson Reeves, the junior from North Carolina. Keegan Smith, the sophomore from Knoxville, Tennessee, right behind them as they go through for the first time in 65 seconds with three to go. So looking closer to about 64 there through the opening quarter. Definitely within the wheelhouse of this entire field. Again, so many of these guys running right around that 410 or under. And that was a pacer who is now off, having just gotten things rolling a little bit. But throw a blanket over this field because they are all still in it. Lots of speed from front to back of this field that is all run between 406 and 414 so far in 2023. And it's still that same order with Charles Perry, one of the few who did race last night, running on the outside shoulder of Dawson Reeves. Two guys who have a little bit of a rematch here today from a race they ran at the running lane meet last week down in Alabama. As here comes Alexander Arambidi taking this thing over, the senior and future Georgia Tech yellow jacket will bring him through 62 seconds, that lap much quicker. They're at 2.08 with two to go. Such mature running up front from Aaron Beattie. He really knows how to pace things, how to take his time, choose his spot, and look at this surge. He's put a solid 10 meters on the rest of the field in just a few seconds of running here, Will. Miles Raymer from right here in Nashville is going to go right behind Alexander Aaron Beattie. Raymer, a Ravenwood Raptor from just south of here in Brentwood, Tennessee. A week after winning a state championship, in this event down in Murfreesboro last week. This is going to look like a two-way race here going into the final 500. Still lots of sprint speed left in that field. So if you're going to join these front two, you're going to have to do it now. That's right. And I don't think anyone's going to catch them. This is another good showdown and a move on the inside now. That's always a danger if you leave it open. He's responding well. I think this is going to be Aaron Beattie's race. And Miles Raymer decides to take it himself. With 400 to go, Alexander Aaron Beattie just glances over his shoulder, notes where the junior from Brentwood is. 61 seconds there with one to go, 310-13, and Aaron Beattie at 310-23. And it's Miles Raymer who continues to look very calm and composed at the front of this field. They've got Will Venable, the junior from Raleigh, North Carolina, trying to run him down in that gold and black uniform, but so far still the same two with 200 left. They've got almost identical 800-meter personal bests at 153 and change. So both really speedy guys with 100 meters to go entering that home stretch. So it's the hometown kid, Miles Raymer, and it's Gainesville, Georgia's Alexander Aaron Beattie. Raymer looking very strong, quickening the pace and defending his home turf here in Nashville. That's going to be a new best for the junior from Ravenwood High School, 408-21, and he closed in 58.09 to take the win. That's a two and a half second advantage over the last lap from Aaron Beattie, and he looked very smooth. In fact, look how good he looks. Everyone else bent over, and uh, he's taking his time. I think we understand why his name is Miles now. I think Miles is ready to just keep running. As you take a look at his finish right here, just still gaining speed into those final 20 meters. 
So Brentwood High School, well represented in the mid-distance categories. They've got a great program out of there. Like you said, it's always neat when a hometown guy is able to take the win on his home turf, relative home turf here. As Miles Raymer does defend this home track here in Nashville, it takes the win in our high school boys mile. Coming up next, we will speed things up to the sprints. It is the women's 100-meter final when we come back. As you continue to watch the 2023 Music City Track Carnival live from Vanderbilt. Back here on the campus of Vanderbilt University, where we are underway at the 2023 Music City Track Carnival with Kate Van Buskirk. I'm Will Bowling. Serenity Douglas is down on the field as we continue with our first sprint final of the afternoon. This is the women's 100-meter final. We've got a U.S. champion in the middle of the track here getting ready to run in Melissa Jefferson running in lane number four. We've also got some pretty remarkable range in we were talking about age and experience and having the opportunity for high schoolers to come and compete against the best the youngest athlete in this field will is 17 and the most mature shall we say given that i share an age with her is 35 <laughs> <laughs> and we've got everything in between so um you know you got one of the best high school athletes in the country in adeja hodge and then of course you've got you know, multiple world championship medalists, um, both indoors and outdoors, those who have had fantastic experience at the Diamond League. So really exciting field here. There's a look at the full start list. Adesha Hodge, the 17-year-old, runs in lane two. 18-year-old Shanti Jackson will be in lane six, the future Arkansas Razorback. So quite honestly, Kate, it's, it's two of the best high school female sprinters ever running right. in the same race right here in lanes two and lane six. Well, and in an era where, unfortunately, we see a lot of sort of ducking of your major competition, you don't right. get to see so many of these excellent showdowns, particularly against the pros. These girls are so experienced at such a young age, really mature, and uh, able to hold their own against a, a field of, you know, women, again, who are much, much more experienced than them. So we're just going to throw it out there for record-keeping that the girls' high school 
100 meter record belongs to Brianna Williams from Jamaica in 1094. That was run on June 21st, 2019. And Adesia Hodge from Montverde, the junior, not even a senior yet, still a junior at Montverde. Got plenty of time to break that. Let's selfishly hope it's today. Oh, well, that's just scary. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Coming off her personal best, April 29th. Uh, she has run under 11-2 four times as a high school junior. She's got the talented Kiara Parker running right to her right in lane three. We mentioned the 2022 U.S. champion, Melissa Jefferson, who is eighth at the World Championships. What a season for her in 2022, finishing up as an All-American at Coastal Carolina and really just shocked everybody with the way she was able to run at Eugene at those U.S. Championships, uh, winning that thing and ran 10.82 last season when legal in 2022. So that's the middle of the track, the top seeds who will occupy those lanes you're looking at here on this fast surface in Nashville. We mentioned Shanti Jackson, Courtney Johnson, and Natalia White. We did have prelims in these 100 meters and high hurdles races that you're about to watch here in Nashville earlier today. So these are seeded based on prelim rounds earlier this morning when the weather wasn't quite this hot as it is now at 90 degrees in Music City. Well, this is why we put the sprints when we do. As a mid-distance runner myself and someone who ran 12 and a half very hot laps in Tokyo in the 5,000 meter a couple years ago, I was very jealous of the sprinters at that time. And these women and men absolutely love the weather here in Nashville. Again, it's so reliable. There's hardly ever wind readings that are anything to speak about. But fast track, hard track, hot track. As they're going to get in the lanes and get ready, you see the fans that have found shade wherever it is. Well, and that's one of the beautiful things about this facility, Will, is that it's it's tree-lined all the way around. Right. So there, you know, that not only provides a little bit of wind protection, but it also gives you some shade uh, to be able to get out of this blazing sun when you want to. I should also just mention, we just saw one of our really young attendees. We had um, age ranges from two to 50 plus at this meet <laughs> wow. starting with the kids 200 little kids 200 meters earlier today that may have been the event of the day <laughs> those steeple chasers jumping over hay bales this morning that's right 400 meter steeple chase started off the competition very well all right so this is our women's pro 100 final with the u.s champion melissa jefferson running in lane number four Clean start and a good one out of the blocks across the board as Melissa Jefferson runs in lane number four, picks up the early advantage. There in lane number six, there's Shanti Jackson as the high schooler will win it. The future Arkansas Razorback 10-89. Unbelievable run by her. We've talked about mature running, but holy smokes. A win legal 10-89 for a lifetime best. That was absolutely thrilling, and she timed that race perfectly. And with the wind legal, that is a national high school record right here in Nashville for Shanti Jackson. Unbelievable. We've got two big records here rewritten in the Music City. And she is pumped about that. Nice, big, congratulatory hug there from Coach. And you could see it when she crossed the line. You're going to get a shot of that. Again, look at the power. She times it perfectly. She uses her height to her advantage. And she comes across that line screaming in ecstasy for that amazing performance. So what a tremendous run to kick off our sprint action. As soon as we confirmed that win was legal, the time was Shanti, very quick. Here's your new national old, high school record holder, Shanti Jackson, with Serenity. How does this win feel for you? Feels great, you know. I've been working on this race for like my whole life, and to finally come out here executing, and this only being what, my third race of the season after coming back from injury, and having a high school national record means a lot. And just to be running against people I really look up to, it just inspired me more. Not only is this a win, this is a PR. 10 8, win legal. 
Tell me about your emotions. You scream when you cross the line. I didn't even know I ran that fast. I was just so happy to win a pro race at 18. And when I heard the time, it's just, I don't even feel it right now. I'm just glad I won. And I'm pretty sure the most come later. But I'm so grateful I was able to do that. Now tell everybody where you're headed to college. University of Arkansas. All right, congrats. Thank you. Will. All right, thank you, Serenity. Shanti Jackson, a run for history here in Nashville to finish again. One for the record books. Stunning this crowd here in Nashville at a time of 10.89. So I think those showdowns are going to continue between the high schoolers, and it's just a good reminder that just because you're pro doesn't mean that you can let your guard down because these youngsters are coming for you. They certainly are, and what a time it is to be a high school runner just in the United States. It, Kate, it feels like every single time we introduce any of these elite high schoolers, we always have to have the record books very nearby. It, it's just <laughs> unbelievable what's going on in, in this country and just around the world right now. That's right, and of course, those times and those marks definitely encourage much of the same you know you see these showdowns happen and and it's often incremental but it's it's back and forth and uh, i think we're going to keep seeing that through the season again we've got those new balance outdoor nationals coming up in a week and then moving into the u.s national championships all of it leading up to the world championships in budapest hungary at the end of august and i wouldn't be surprised to see some of these you know 18 year olds 19 year olds contesting for spots on those national senior teams Remember the name Shanti Jackson. And honestly, it's going to be pretty hard to forget it considering the run that she just had and the place on the world stage that she already occupies. So up next is the Pro Men's 100. Let's see if the men can top that. <laughs> going to be tough <laughs> uh, after that opening act where you've got Craven Gillespie running in one, the two-time NCAA champion. While at Oregon, Brandon Carnes running in two and his personal best in the American Track League in Puerto Rico a year ago in a time of 10.02. JT Smith runs in lane three, the 2023 U.S. Indoor Champion at 60 meters, ran collegiately at Texas A&M Commerce, recent winner in the Southland Conference. Joseph Amoa had the fastest time, taking the middle lane out of the prelims, ran for Ghana at the World Championships in that 4x100 meter final. He'll be in four. C.J. Green is in five. Samson Colbrook from the Bahamas. He competed at the World Championships a year ago. He's in this field as well in the prelims. Uh, as I get my uh, mind straight here, that's for Coy Braithwaite, who's going to run in late six. Jelani Walker in seven. And Chris Royster is going to run on the outside in eight. Some great showdowns already through those prelims earlier today. There were four sections of men all running very tightly together, again, with marginal if they're at all wind. And we're about to see a repeat of that, I think, with the cream of the crop here at Vanderbilt University in Nashville, Tennessee. So last season, Joseph Amoa out of lane number four had the fastest time in this field, running 9.94 in 2022 competed in the world championships in both the 100 and in the 200. As you see Amoa there just a moment ago there in the middle of the track from outside in you see them line up and their blocks and ready to go under the sun here in Nashville on a surface that is running very very quickly today with the perfect amount of legal wind to push these guys forward to potential new season and personal bests. So Green there in five, looking to defend his meet title against so many of our returning champions, especially after the addition of the sprint races and the field events, which really is, is not only expanding the level of competition, but bringing tremendous crowds out as well. Lots of folks keen to watch some of the best in the world compete right here in Music City. So ready to go in our men's 100 final. Set. 
Quickly out of the blocks they go and running in lane number two, Brandon Carnes had a very quick start there on the inside as they push towards the finish. And it's close with Carnes leading the way, running in lane number two, 10-02. And that's a new PB for the 28-year-old American. So wind legal across the board. We've got personal best tie for our winner. And then Smith, 10.09, also a personal best. We've got a national record here for the British Virgin Islands with Brathwaite. Absolutely incredible results. 10-1-1 at that time for the former Indiana Hoosier as you look at the finish. And it was Brandon Carnes just quickest out of the blocks beating everybody's reaction time, and that helped him make the ultimate difference there at the end. Again, such a hard race to call until about those last 20 meters. Even then, everyone coming across the line very closely, but <laughs> love those congratulations on the infield. And these guys are going to feel really good about that performance, and then, like we said, try to get in some fluids, get out of the sun, and get ready for whatever comes next. But it has been hot action here in Music City where, very fittingly, we've got, I think, about four different music festivals going on right now, Will. <laughs> Always. So lots of, lots of opportunity Welcome for these. Nashville, right? That's right. Lots of opportunities for these athletes on a Saturday. Last year, this meet was a, a Saturday-Sunday. So yeah. having it be Friday-Saturday, you can perhaps take a little bit of advantage of that. And you see the, the times populating there. Confirmation 10.02 for Brandon Carnes of the United States, equaling his lifetime best and pulling several others to personal best, season's best, and national records behind him. So we are working on getting Brandon Carnes ready to talk to Serenity down there trackside. As the American runs his best time, like you mentioned, JT Smith was in there too at 10.09. As those two each go under 10.1 here on a hot day. And Brandon Carnes will get a little bit of water and heck all these athletes putting their relaxation and their recovery routines to the test with uh, uh, this heat that they're battling here in Middle Tennessee. Well, it's hot up here for us in the booth. It is yes. hotter on the track. <laughs> We're under air. a tent <laughs> and they are feeling it down there. But that heat means lightning fast times and it's going to continue. Look, we just wanted to know what the athletes were feeling, right? <laughs> we just wanted to know That's exactly right. what Carnes and the rest of these runners are feeling as we're continuing on here at the Music City Track Carnival. And we're going to head to break. We're coming up next. The hurdles are going on the track. Kenny Harrison takes the track, the American record holder on deck in Music City.
Live from Nashville, it is the 2023 Music City Track Carnival, the 21st installment of this meet as a part of the 2023 Puma American Track League circuit. As we get you ready for a busy summer of racing and another event coming up beginning of August, just right at two months away, the Ed Murphy Classic, Kate, you mentioned it earlier, has been one of these fast-growing local meets that has exploded uh, and we're looking forward to being there in Memphis later this summer. Absolutely. Well, you and I had our, our first introduction there last year. That's I right. can't believe it's been almost a year. That was a meet that I've also raced several times. And uh, we got to give a quick shout out to, of course, Max Paquette, who is the meet director for Ed Murphy. And then Mr. Dave Milner, who in his 21st consecutive year yeah. is putting on Music City Track Carnival. And it is you know, without these guys, without these men and women in our sport, creating opportunities, and, and that's a good reminder, too, to, to thank an official if you ever see one, because without those uh, people putting, putting on these great opportunities, we just would not have the level of track and field that we do domestically here in the States, and uh, particularly in this state, Tennessee. So you ran in this circuit as a pro. I ran in this circuit as a slow high schooler. <laughs> in this meet specifically, that would have been... Nine years ago, I'm aging myself a little bit in a bad way, but it, it was so cool being a part of this meet. I remember Dave recruiting us as just one of the, the, the solid high school teams in the area here in Middle Tennessee as a, as a Nashville native to come out of this thing. And my goodness, it, it's been crazy to see this thing grow. I, I remember being introduced to it uh, just a little over 12 years ago, uh, back when it was the Music City Distance Carnival, like you mentioned, and you had... Uh, distance races from uh, 800 and 1500 all the way up to uh, the steeplechase and the 5k uh, just amazing to see uh, now with the puma american track league coming on board and paul doyle and his entire team it, it's just been tremendous to watch the growth of local meets for u.s track fans in the united states and that's been the mission of of this meet and many others like it here in the area well, such a good reminder that, it, you know, it's about the fan favorites, too. And we've already seen that. What fantastic showdowns already on our track and our field. It was absolute magic last night with uh, Mr. Casey Lightfoot making all of those American record attempts and then, you know, finally being able to pull it off. And I think what was so cool is that we had folks in the stands that I was chatting with who had never seen a pole vault before. Yeah, right. Never mind one of the best in the world. And and so all of a sudden you're expanding the fan base and uh, we're going to continue that now with our pro women's 100 meter hurdles. Well, Kenny Harrison had a tremendous prelim run in 1249. Just a tick off of her season's best of 1235. You're going to see her here running in lane number four. The American record holder, the former world record holder, who was second in Tokyo, a five-time U.S. champion outdoors, one of the best to ever do it over the high hurdles. Absolutely. Well, she's going to be in very esteemed company with a couple of other Americans who competed at those same Tokyo Olympics, including Gabby Cunningham, who's coming in two-time defending U.S. indoor champion, seventh in that race in tokyo so a finalist there as well coming in with a 1256 so we've got some NACAC and ncaa champions we've got another tokyo olympian and anna cockrell so it's it's going to be a stacked field ua lynn the 24 year old from china in one amber hughes in two gabby cunningham running in lane number three we mentioned harrison the fourth place finisher at the U.S. Championships last summer, Tania Marshall, who ran a 12.64 earlier this morning in five. Anna Cockrell, Miriam Abdul-Rashid, and Milan Young, that group of eight that is getting ready to run here in just a few minutes. And that run from Kenny Harrison back in 2016, 12.2. It's just amazing. I think especially in the hurdles, when you talk about uh, on the women's side, what Toby Amosan did last year in Eugene and Kenny Harrison and Jasmine Camacho Quinn, uh, of course, then Dalila Muhammad and Sydney McLaughlin in the 400 meter hurdles. And then on the guys' side, uh, you've got spectacular high hurdlers, but maybe the race of uh, Olympic history with Karsten Warholm uh, in the 400 meter hurdles. I mean, uh, we're talking about hurdles being as good as they've ever been in the history of track and field right now absolutely i mean think about the depth of the names that you just said and and hardly being able to remember them all that's really 
uh, part of part of what makes this so exciting. And, and another fan favorite, folks who have never seen a hurdle race before coming out and just being amazed. I've, I had a kid walk up to the high hurdles and say, it's bigger than me. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I think to the naked eye, as you watch here in our Peacock stream, it, it, it looks so effortless the way that these men and women just step over those hurdles. And then, Kate, you're a bored distance runner trying to train for the steeplechase and realize just how high these things are. <laughs> that's right. You can speak from experience on that one. And that's at a much slower speed, so a lot more room for error, which these sprint hurdlers do not have. And they're going to stand them up here and try this start again in the 100-meter hurdles final and Kenny Harrison is a scratch lane four is empty here in this race and that's a real shame but some excellent depth across the board with our other competitors so she will be missed and also makes for some interesting tactics when all of a sudden the middle of the race is vacant that doesn't happen very often so that makes the job a little bit tougher for 24 year old American Tania Marshall who will be two lanes away from her second fastest competitor out of the prelims and Gabby Cunningham Lanes five and three, the ones to watch here. And a talented 400-meter hurdler and a cockerel dropping down to the high hurdles here as well. There on the outside at six. Certainly can never forget about her. Well, it's all a relative term when it comes to sprinting, but we've got quite a bit of uh, endurance strength in this field with several women who are excellent 400-meter hurdlers, to your point. So our starters have this field ready to go. Back in the blocks and ready for our 100-meter hurdles final. It's a clean start in the women's 100-meter hurdles final, and there on the outside, a very good start for Miriam Abdul-Rashid of Canada, trying to make up ground there on Tania Marshall, running in lane number five as Marshall surges through the line. We checked the times, and it's 12.67 for Tania Marshall. Anna Cockrell was second at 12.79. So an equal to Cockrell's season's best. Season's best as well for Abdul Rashid, who you said had that great start. And then Cunningham rounds out our sub-13 field of the day in 12.98. So it just goes to show that even without the likes of Kenny Harrison, we can make for a great race. And for Cunningham, that is a season's best. That is two for Abdul Rashid and Cockrell, who equals what she ran in the prelims, which was a season's best of 12.79. As Tania Marshall, the fourth place finisher at the NACAC championships a year ago, is first to the line. And we'll get ready to hear from her coming up in just a second. And there you see on your screen those results listed. Just a little bit of wind. Not much to speak of, but certainly hot temps. So we will continue on to our men's high hurdle final coming up here in just a moment. As we continue on here at the 2023 Music City Track Carnival preview of what's to come as well as our officials get those hurdles back on the track. We've got outstanding 1500 meter races. We're coming up in just a couple of minutes. You've got Alex Tubal. You've got a really, really good field in the women's 15, the men's 1500 as well. After that, the 200s as well as 400 and 400 meter hurdles. All that's left here over the next hour and a half at the 2023 Music City Track Carnival. So 
So nearing the halfway point of our competition here this afternoon in Nashville, where again, still 90 degrees, some clouds overhead, but that sun beaming down on our competitors from all ages. Like you mentioned, we've had two years old, we've had 50 years old, and everything in between as our men's high hurdlers get ready for the finish. And in the meantime, we're going to head downstairs and hear from Serenity. All right, Tania, tell me why we're under this tent. It's burning up out here, girl. <laughs> it is. It's like 95 degrees. I mean, we've been out here since 9 a.m., so it's like six, seven hours being out in the sun, baking. Just baking. 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 The track is hot, very hot, but it's a good, it's good weather. You know, you can't never complain about it being hot. That's what we run good in, so... Were you feeling good about your race? No. Um, it kind of felt like more of a practice run. I think the heat got to me. Sorry for my voice. I feel like I'm losing my voice. Um, but I don't know. I feel like I didn't really execute um, certain parts of my race. And that's what I've been trying to work on in practice. So I'm just waiting to put them together in the race. All right. Well, hopefully you can put them together. Make sure you hydrate. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you, girl. All right, thanks, Serenity. Here's another look at Marshall's finish. Every ounce of energy, every meter counting for those world standards, U.S. standards that many of our athletes are competing for here this afternoon as we get you ready next for the men's 110-meter hurdles final. We've got seven men ready to go with Romaldo Galarza in one, Parker Bowden in two, Shane Braithwaite, 33-year-old from the Bahamas, who was sixth at the 2019 Doha World Championship, second at the Commonwealth Games last summer, running 13.3 last year. He'll be in the middle of the track running in lane three. You've got Joshua Zeller from Great Britain, who was fifth at the 2022 Eugene Games, fourth at the Commonwealth, Commonwealth Games a year ago, running 13.19 a season ago. That was his personal best. He'll get that middle lane running in four. You've got Paris Williams, 24-year-old American, who is fourth at the U.S. Indoor Champs over the high hurdles in five. Eve Sherubin of Haiti in six. And Sierra Hendricks-Williams rounding out this field in lane number seven. So there is Williams. The American running in lane number five. You see he'll run right next to Sherubin on his outside shoulder. We've got a full house. And we are ready to go. Top time in 2022 out of this field, 13-19 for the 22-year-old phenom from Great Britain, Joshua Zeller, who you'll see in the light blue here in the middle of the track. Clean start at first over the hurdles. It is Joshua Zeller running there in the lane number four, making very good ground on the rest of this field, but here comes Shane Braithwaite running in three, close to the line, and in three it is Braithwaite, the 33-year-old running a new season's best in 13.58. And unfortunately, I think that was Galarza who might have gone down over the first hurdle. You know, we're sitting right here at the finish line, and I love that clatter over that final hurdle as these guys in the high hurdles approach that finish line, but that was very unfortunate for Romaldo Galarza. Galarza, who unfortunately crashed over that first hurdle. Clean finish for the rest, and another season's best for Cherubin as well in 13.71. So, too, Hendricks Williams in 13.97. So, continuing our trend of season's best, lifetime best, records across the board here at Music City Track Carnival 2023. 
So Brathwaite's the World Championships finalist in 2019 was the quickest there. That 13.58, we mentioned a new season's best. After running 13.81 in the prelim, a busy day for the 33-year-old who's catching his breath before talking to Serenity here in just a moment. Our newest winner, the men's 110 hurdles, that's Shane Brathwaite, who's downstairs with Serenity. Three years old. I am. And you're still out here, running with the big dogs, still winning too. Still out here. Um, I had a good year last year. I made the finals at World Championship, so I still got it. So I'm going to keep going until the wheels fall off. All right, now tell me about this heat that everybody has been talking about. How does it feel down on the track? It's 91 overall, but how does it feel? Oh, it's hot. Uh, I, I live in Austin, and it gets real hot in Austin, but we always train in the morning, so by around this time, I'm, I'm already chilling. So it's pretty warm, though, but it's good for, for, for this kind of competition and fast times. Now, what does this win mean to you? It's good. A big, big boost in my confidence. Um, I was really sick in April. I only ran two races, and they weren't good. They were around the same time I was sick. So I'm just trying to bounce back and get back in some fine form before, you know, uh, CAC games and whatnot and the world championships. So dealing with all of that, tell me how you were able to just focus on the race only today. Um, just mentally locking in. Um, me and my coaches, my coach D2 and my coach Bryson Tucker, we we really been fine-tuning my, uh, my training, trying to get ready because I had a lot of races. So I had to dial in mentally at practice to fine-tune a lot of things and just get ready for my next race. All right, congrats. All right, thank you so much. All right, thank you, Serenity. As we go to break and come back with the 1500s up next, a very fast field ready to run on deck in Nashville. Back to the distance after this at the Music City Track Carnival. Back with you here in Nashville at the 2023 Music City Track Carnival. 
with Kate Van Buskirk. I'm Will Bowling. Serenity Douglas down on the field as we continue in just a couple of minutes with the first of our two 1500s, the women followed by the men. We've already had a record-breaking weekend here in Nashville. We mentioned yesterday Casey Lightfoot setting the new American record in the pole vault. Well, how about Shanti Jackson running a new national high school record in the 100-meter dash in 10.89 earlier this afternoon. Kate, just unbelievable what we saw from the future Arkansas Razorback. Well, not only was it a new national record for her age group, but it also tied the sixth fastest time in the world this year. So that, again, gives you a better sense of exactly the level of competition and how stunningly fast these young high school athletes are. Get another shot of it here so that we can... Remember exactly how thrilling it was. And it was an excellent start for Jackson, who just surged over the middle of that race and beat an outstanding group of professionals. Able to take it in 10.89. It was done in a flash as the new National Girls High School record at 100 meters was set here on this fast surface at Vanderbilt University. Got a little shot there of the crowd trying to keep cool as well under the shade of these beautiful trees. And we've got high jump going on right now as well, too. And speaking of those trees, they provide some excellent shade for our athletes. Unfortunately, it means that they overhang the existing pole vault runway. So <laughs> there was a crew of more people than I want to talk about here yesterday for several hours setting up that elevated runway for the pole vault and Casey Lightfoot's record leading into a beautiful evening of competition so that it was completely clear of those trees. And we're getting ready now, as you see on your screen, for another mid-distance race. This was my favorite event when I was competing, the 1500 meter as part of the Puma American Track League. And we've got 15 very fast women on deck. And they're off and running where Alexina Tubal, the 29-year-old American who ran a 427 full mile in St. Louis just earlier this week leads this field. You've got Angel Picarillo, the 29-year-old American as well, former Villanova standout, Karina Villian, Anna Vess, Lauren Berman, Madeline Berkson, Addie Wiley, the national record holder for the U.S. high school 1,600 meters. So we've got two national high school record holders in the building wow. here, Kate. And we have got... The pace set by Emily Richards scheduled to take them through 800 and 208. Well, and this is great work by Richards doubling back from a very recent run in that 800 where she cruised to a 201. She's got lots of pacing experience, and she's looking to take them out really strong. I love watching Angel run. She is another person that I've competed against quite a bit. Very strong competitor, powerful runner, isn't afraid to take the pace out, and she is sitting right on Richard's back. And Angel is having a terrific 2023 season. She ran her personal best of 407.4 at Wake Forest back just two months ago. As they came through 349.4, did Richards with Picarillo, Kate Current, Addie Wiley, and Alexina Tubal leading this field at a single file through the opening 500. And Kate Current there sitting in third. She's got some great endurance strength as well. Earlier this year in what was the return to world cross-country racing after so many years of not having it, thanks, of course, to the COVID pandemic. Current was part of that bronze medal winning mixed relay team in Australia at those cross country championships. And she's looking great, tucked in third there. And a move now on the outside. Everyone just trying to find their position. And that's Wiley now, who's right behind Picarillo with Tubal making up some ground there, too. 155. Now 155 22 with two to go. That's a very quick split of, of 65 82. And Richards, again, kudos to her, doing a great job doubling back from that lactic clearance in the 800 earlier as they now have 800 meters, 700 meters remaining, pardon me. And it is Picarillo taking the lead and already establishing some distance on Wiley behind her. Wiley behind her. There's Kate Current still running in third. It's been this order since the beginning as they run inside the final 600 Richards, as you mentioned, doing a great job taking them through on schedule. That was 65.8 the last time they came around as Picarillo starts to make her move, and Wiley decides to go with her. 
Well, the meet record was set three years ago by Corey McGee, another standout in this distance at 4.03.64. They're going to have to keep this thing rolling if they want to hit that, but they are not far off at the moment. World champ standards, 4.03.50, and these women know what's on, what's at stake here, and they're going after it. Tubal rounding out the top three. It's been this order for quite some time. Picarillo, Wiley, and Tubal, 3.01.63 with one to go for Angel Picarillo of the United States, running 66.1 with the Pacers stepping off. It's that trio making the turn with 300 to go now. And here goes Addy Wiley along the outside. The American making a big push with 250 to go now. There's Tubal running into second. Picarillo did a lot of hard work out there at the front of that field. Wiley, perhaps the beneficiary with 200 meters left and one final kick for home here in Nashville. The final 150 as Wiley quickens the stride, looking very smooth, entering the home stretch with Tubal right behind her. Addie Wiley, the 19-year-old, fifth at the World U-20 Championships last summer, the national high school record holder at 1,600. She's going to have a big time right here. Addie Wiley racing for home. It's going to be a new personal best for the 19-year-old. Not only is it a personal best, it is a new meet record, and it is World Championships qualifying standard 403.22. That is going to feel amazing. 403.22 followed by Tubal in 405.79. That's a personal best as well. And, Kate, everyone who finished in the top five ran a career best. That's Wiley, Tubal, Picarillo, Villon, Ritter, Kate Curran of Canada in 411.53. That's a career best as you watch Wiley finish right here. And this was incredible because I was clocking this. She had to run under 62, I believe, in that final lap in order to get that standard, and she nailed it. You can see what that means to her coming across that line. Unbelievable finish for her. Absolutely stunning. And uh, just, <laughs> this is becoming the new normal, Will. It is. Hattie Wiley is a rising star for the United States and around the world. And an excellent time here today as she's standing by with Serenity. Tell me how that felt. It felt really good. I mean, it actually really hurt, but I felt strong and confident. So that really helped carry me down the home stretch. Now, personal best, meet record, and you qualify for Worlds. Is that exactly what you were looking for? Yeah, I was really looking to qualify for Worlds today. I'm well, USA's first, and so I'm really, really happy to come away with that. All right, congrats. Thank you. All right, thank you, Serenity, as Addie Wiley takes the win, and uh, it feels like everybody in that field, Kate, just took a personal best back home. They did. You mentioned it earlier, but Angel Piccarello did so much of the work, and these other women have her to thank for keeping that pace honest. 65, 66 seconds was their slowest. Addie Wiley with a huge move with just under 300 meters to go. That was obviously calculated and intentional, and it paid off big time. Tubal also with a stunning time of 405.79, 406.96 for Angel. So four women squarely under 410. And this sets the tone for what is going to continue to be some excellent middle distance action with our men's 1500 meter coming up next. So I remind you to uh, go to your favorite app store, whatever that is, on your smart device, pick up the roster app can follow the live results there on roster for every meet in the Puma American Track League circuit. And you can play some fantasy as well. And pick your fantasy track and field squad heading into our competitions here, always in the Puma American Track League. As you're seeing that shot of the infield there and some folks doing their final warm-ups, you can almost see the ripples of the heat waves across the camera. <laughs> right. We're feeling it up here in the booth, but we're feeling especially hot because of how blazing these performances have been. That was an incredible finish there by Wiley in the women's 1500, and it sets us up beautifully for another very large field 
in this men's pro 1500 meter we're going to have 16 guys on this track and having set my personal best several years ago in this distance in an event where we had 20 athletes wow. i know what it's like to have some traffic <laughs> so how does that impact your strategy running in a more crowded atmosphere around you Oh, it's a great question. I think so much of that comes down to uh, really the body type of, of a lot of these athletes and, okay. and having to rely on knowing and trusting their instincts and their strengths. So you don't want to get caught too far back. You don't want to be you know, stuck on the rail when a move is made. But you also don't, in that am amount of people on the track, you don't want to be stuck on the outside of lane one or even lane two running more distance than you need to. So... You know, I'm 5'10". I always had to try to find my space. Yeah. Um, and, and frankly, I don't remember much of that race because I think <laughs> I was just so focused on not falling down the whole time, which might be the case for some of these guys. But another fantastic opportunity for so many men who have run under 340 already this year. And I know that in speaking with so many of these guys ahead of this event, they're looking to get that whole field under 340. Well, last season, it was the Australian Jack Anstey who ran 336.54, ran his personal best in Los Angeles last July in that time, former Illinois State runner. He's going to start way on the outside in hip number 15, and we've got another 800-meter champion here at MCTC, Alex Amanqua, who is tasked with setting a very brisk pace of 57.3 per lap, aiming for 335, which would be personal bests for the majority of this field. Rob Napolitano, the 28-year-old Puerto Rican, has run 335. He did that back in 2021. That is the Puerto Rican national record to this day. Well, and that 335 would get them dangerously close to the world championship standard of 334.20. Also pretty close to the meet record of 3.34.63 set by pro, also from Australia, Ollie Hoare, back three years ago here at when it was MCDC. And there you see the start list, another international group of sensational athletes, as you said, led by Rob Napolitano with the fastest season's best and personal best of the field. So 15 men plus the pacer of Monqua taking the track here in Music City as we are underway in the men's 1500 meter run. A couple of collegiate athletes here in this one as well, including LSU Tiger Davis Bove, who is a Middle Tennessee native. He called Centennial High School home here just south of Nashville in Franklin. He's wearing hip number two. You've got Shane Bracken, the 24 year old Irishman who ran at Ole Miss. He was second in the SEC in the 1,500-meter run this outdoor season. So pro talent as well as current collegiate talent taking to the track here all together at the 2023 Music City Track Carnival. And everybody is following Napolitano out in front. And that pace setting by Alex Amanqua is on schedule. 43.2 there through the first 300. It's Napolitano, Sean Peterson, and Ben Allen, the top three behind him. So right on pace for about 57 high through that opening 400 meters. Amanqua doing a great job up front. Would do well just to take a quick look over his shoulder, pull back a little bit. But he is starting to string these athletes out. As I mentioned, potential danger of so much traffic on the track but they are running single file that indicates how quick they're going. And I think we're going to have a great race as Amonqua looks like he might be ready to step off pretty soon here. So Rob Napolitano with Sean Peterson up there. The two battling for this thing. Peterson who made the NCAA outdoor meet with Youngstown State last season. Abe Alvarado making good time as well with two to go and it's 143 38 with two left that was 60.1 for Amanqua the pacer Napolitano 143 67 with two laps left so a bit of a slower lap there at 60 flat Amanqua continuing to do great job pace setting and just checking back with the runners behind him I think Napolitano at this point looks absolutely fantastic he's chomping at the bit and again a younger runner running with a ton of experience and maturity as Amanqua is now off and the race is on in earnest. So Napolitano, Alvarado, and Ben Allen. That's the top three with Dan Schaefer, Jack Anstey, Davis Bove, Corey Belmore. 
made quite a name for himself in the beer mile. He's back in Nashville here where he's run a couple of times in his career, making his way to the outside. There's Dan Schaefer of the United States battling with Abe Alvarado, and Alvarado will take it with one to go. And in the LSU singlet, there's the local product, Davis Bove, mixing it up in there as well. That lap was quicker, 59.5 for Alvarado, followed by Schaefer and Napolitano. Well, at 2.43 with one lap to go, these guys know that they're going to have to start kicking things into high gear if they want to get under that 3.40 mark. And there are still almost all of them in this race with 200 meters to go at about 3.11. Napolitano gave up the lead with one to go. He takes it back with 200 meters remaining. There's Davis Bowe, the Centennial High School man from right here in Middle Tennessee. The LSU Tiger making the turn for home as they race inside the final 100 meters. Davis Bobe trying to hold off a very fast field on the outside. There's Ben Allen in the all black taking it at the tape. Ben Allen in 338. And what a final lap for Allen who really was not in the conversation for most of this. That was a 54-7 closing 400 meters and that is absolutely stunning running. It's a personal best for our first two athletes and then season's best, personal best, right across the board with our top four under 340. But what a huge final lap there for Ben Allen. Here you see another shot of that. And he really chose his position well, running squarely in the middle of lane two and just turning on the burners in the final 40 meters of that race. Excellent execution. A perfect push for the American who takes the win and a new PB. And again, on a day where you would expect things to not be close to personal best like we've seen with the heat and the humidity, a tip of the cap to all these runners who handle the conditions really, really well. Absolutely. And there you see the, the results. So for Allen, not only is that a personal best, but it's the first time under that sort of magical 340 barrier. You know, in, in track and field, we have these numeric barriers that sort of are extra special when you get under them. And, and we had four guys do that today. That's got to feel so good for him and give him a lot of confidence moving into his next race. And Ben is downstairs with Serenity. Sweet spot, and you pushed through. Was that the goal for you today? Yeah, um, just talking with my coaches before the race. We knew I could come in and win it, so he just wanted me up front, and then kind of last lap, took care of himself, and I just kicked the best I could. So, yeah. Now, where do you find that kick? Because it's pretty tough out here. It's pretty hot here on the track. So, where does that kick come from? Uh, just a lot of from training. I train with Eric Holt, and he's a monster. So. Um, I learned a lot from him and just like sauna I go to sauna so it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be so not too bad all right congrats <laughs> thank you all right thank you serenity as we take a break and when we come back it'll be the 200s a pair of sections and three for the men as we continue, it's the 2023 Music City Track Carnival. Fast finishes on a hot day in Music City. We're having fun. Hope you are too here at the Puma American Track League.
Back with you here in beautiful Nashville, Tennessee, as we get you ready for the 200s up next here at the 2023 Music City Track Carnival. In the broadcast booth with Kate Van Buskirk, I'm Will Bowling, as we introduce you to the first of two sections in the 200. And last time we had a sprint final, Kate, it, it went pretty well. We had a new national high school record from Shanti Jackson, and uh, we'll see if these 200-meter runners can up the ante here coming up in just a minute. It did go pretty well for the youngsters in that last sprint race. Unfortunately, we've just received word that Adeja Hodge, who had you know a fantastic 100 there, is unfortunately not going to be starting in this pro women's 200-meter A heat. Just taking care of a couple little tightnesses and you know just being really smart and mature again about her body and, and making sure that she's all set to go. But regardless, we're going to have some more hot times on this blazing fast outdoor track and field facility here at Vanderbilt University in Nashville. And it is interesting, too. We've talked a lot about the weather today, but, but it's a very appropriate conversation when you talk about running in the summer in the south. It, it seems like, to me, talking to a lot of these sprinters, they would rather it be this hot as long as they get the right amount of wind at their backs to push them forward to run a fast time. Well, and I've used the word, and I don't think I'm overusing it. It is magic here in Nashville this time of year because you get that perfect combo of exactly those two things. And for those, you know, distance races, we had the 3,000 steeplechase and the 5,000 last night. It's cooler. They're able to take advantage of the sun being down. It's still warm, but it's not blazing like this. You want your muscles to be warm. You want to take advantage of a hot track. You want to take advantage of people wanting to come out and sit and cheer you on. Um, and it's, it's, you know, we have that, that magical combination here. And uh, we're seeing that come into, into fruition with our results. So there's a start list here for our first of two sections. Timed finals in the women's 200-meter dash. Where we are looking for... Runners who have been busy so far this afternoon running the hundreds. So just getting a read on who is present, who might be absent here in this field. As we mentioned, Adesia Hodge is absent. Looking for Crystal Awua. Jessica Goodbye from Ivory Coast, who was a World Championships semifinalist a year ago. Gun is up as we get ready for our first of two sections. And a clean start in the women's 200-meter dash, our first of two heats, and running there in the middle in lane number four, Jessica Goodbye of Ivory Coast making excellent time as they make the turn for home, and Atalia White running in there in lane three, looking very quick towards the finish as White... Side by side with Candace Hill in eight. Will finish strongly, and that is a new personal best for Natalia White. 22-39 to take the win. Fabulous sprinting there by White of Jamaica. 22-39 for her, 22-57 for Candace Hill. And that means that both of those top women have achieved that world championship standard that, again, counts for so much in addition to those world champs points. So personal best and season's best, respectively. But White, with that fast speed suit, you got to love those Puma kits. They're, yeah, that's right. They're, they're something to look at. They're very fast, and they're, they're great uh, fan favorites as well and look at the power across the line here by white i really like the extension of the arm action there and she's using everything she can to power through and there's another look as white leans through the finish a nice finish there by hill on the outside too she was sort of snuck up into our shot at the last minute but really well timed by her and like i said Every hundredth of a second counts, especially when you're trying to get those world champs qualifying standards out of the way. So there's another look at the final times, and in just another minute, we will hear another gun for the start of the B section in our Pro 200 with three sections of guys on deck after this B heat for the ladies. So we will get ready to hear from Natalia White after our second section here in the 200. With Kendall Baisden, Abiki Egbenigi. Ran here locally at Middle Tennessee State. 
Hafsatu Kamara, Lauren Rain Williams, Samantha Gonzalez, Taylor Anderson, and Simone Mason. Here in this group of seven in section B. And they're going to stand them up and start the process over for Section B. All sprints left here today in Nashville. Here on Peacock. Glad you're with us. Kate and I always have fun watching track together. It's especially fun when you've had an American record and a national high school record. It, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt, absolutely. A couple of meet records thrown in there just for good measure. Again, that's uh, also worth something when you've got a meet that is a true adult this year at 21 years that's old. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> this meet can go on one of those pedal taverns that makes its way through <laughs> Nashville and uh, holds us up in traffic for those of us who call it home. That's right. Clean start at section B of the women's 200 meter dash. And quick reaction there for Lauren Rain Williams running in lane number five as they make that turn. And it is Rain Williams racing for home. Side by side they go away there on the inside. You've got Abiki Ekbenigi running well as well. But here on the outside, that is Taylor Anderson. Who runs a personal best? 23.59 out of lane number seven. Can't forget about those runners running that long curve on the outside. And Anderson made sure we remembered her name there at that finish. She sure did. And we saw that again in the last section with Candace Hill sneaking through at the perfect moment towards the end there out of lane eight. And I think some of the disadvantage, as much as, you know, you're running maybe a tighter turn as the inside lane, is you don't always have that line of vision. Here you see another head-on shot of that finish and the power out of lane seven. Excellent across the line there, and like you said, rewarded with a personal best. That is no small feat running that quickly for a personal best out of lane number seven, exactly what Anderson is able to do. We should mention that the top two were seven and eight. That's right. Certainly were, as Natalia White officially becomes our winner of the women's 200, running 22.39, and she's downstairs with Serenity. Oh, you told me she's slowly coming back. That was really fast coming back. But tell me how you're feeling about it. Oh, I'm super excited. Let me just lead with that. Super excited. Oh, I did two rounds in 100. And you're come doing back and run a Memphis again, too? I would say opener in a two. Really, really excited and proud of the work that I've been putting in. And... Sometimes, you know, you feel a little defeated because it's not turned over as you want it to, but patience and my trust in God has kept me grounded. And, you know, the fruit is being shown out right now. Now, for a little bit of a background, the last time you personal best was in 2018. Yeah. So once again, how did it even feel to be going that fast right now? In all honesty, uh, after that second round of the 100, my body really felt like that was it for today. But coach was like, you know, you need the races. Just go out there, enjoy yourself. And, you know, whatever it is, it is. And to be honest, I just went for it. And I didn't expect that time. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I didn't expect that time, but I'm super grateful. All right, congrats. Thank you. All right, thank you, Serenity. As we get back on the track and get ready to go here for the men's 200, there's another look at that finish for Natalia White, the winner running in lane three out of section number one. Fast day for the sprinters and distance runners alike here in Nashville where the men's 200 runs next. Down there in that back corner of the track where Demarius Smith will be in three. Tina Tenda Marienga from Zimbabwe, the 23-year-old who is a semi-finalist in the NCAA champions running as a TCU Horn Frog a year ago. He'll be in the middle running at four. Cravon Charleston in five. Jose Figueroa from Puerto Rico in seven. And Charles Okizi from Nigeria running that curve in lane eight. 
Mati Yenga in four doubling back from that hundred earlier unfortunately did not make the final there looking for another opportunity to tear up this lightning fast track at Vanderbilt's outdoor track and field complex competed at the world championships a year ago in Eugene and looking to take this one here in Nashville. A clean start, and look at those men go in the middle of the track. Cravon Charleston running in lane number five, making the turn with Charleston. Figueroa and Okizi there in the outside lanes. Charleston, the man to beat. Quick out of the blocks, and quick is to the finish, running in the middle in lane five. Cravon Charleston in 2044. So a decisive win by Charleston. Powering across that line. A half second advantage over Smith, who ends up second. And he is looking pretty smooth and collected here after that dominant victory. It's a tall guy, and again, he's really using that height to his advantage here. You see him coming across on that head on shot. A bit harder to get a sense of exactly how much distance he had put between himself and his competitors. There you have a better idea of it. That long stride. Powering through that finish line and just taking a break on that uh, that see that runway it comes in handy. That's right. Multi-purpose. <laughs> it's a bench for our winner. <laughs> a lot of people who labored for many hours yesterday to make sure that runway was ready to go for Casey Lightfoot, who set the American record as well as the rest of our pole vaulters yesterday on the men's and women's side as you see the final results and <laughs> Serenity takes a seat with taking a load off as well <laughs> Cravon over there we'll hear from him after we finish off these second and third heats in the men's 200 and I just gotta say this is a real who's who of the international scene we've got Nigeria Puerto Rico Zimbabwe of course the United States Ghana Grenada I'm sure I'm missing some we've got quite an amassment here of international talent so fun to see so many people from you know most of them do end up training in the south great place to train easy to get to these excellent opportunities for competition but awesome to see as i said i believe at last count 43 nations represented here at vanderbilt in the B section, we will see Akeem Sirleaf running in lane number three. Jared Elcock from Trinidad and Tobago in four. Camilo Matalbe from South Africa in five. Kyle Groh has the best personal best out of this field, running 1997. Three Kevins, Diego Pedrosi, our field in section two of three. This is a timed final in the men's 200. It's the big day for Royster, having run the heats and finals of the 100 already and coming back for this, too. Clean start of the second section of the men's 200-meter dash. Tariq Evans running in lane number seven, running very quickly as they make that turn. And there on the inside, it's Batalbe from South Africa. In lane number five, side by side with Kyle Groh from Trinidad and Tobago. And it is Groh in 2082 who takes it right ahead of Diego Pedrosi from Italy in 2084. A season's best for him in second. So two hundredths of a second separating first and second, then another three hundredths back to third. Throw a blanket over them. That was a tight finish. So a close sprint to the line in section two. Now you see exactly how close with all of these athletes straining to just get that small inch and advantage on the others. But successful day for Kyle Groh coming away with that very narrow margin of victory. It's incredible to me, Kate, just how relaxed those guys look in a meet that a race that is anything but relaxing mentally and physically for them. I remember a high school coach telling us 
the, the day that you see Usain Bolt tense up and <laughs> grimace at the finish line, that's the day that you're allowed to do that, and uh, we were never really allowed to. Well, and that, of course, was rare if it ever did happen. That was <laughs> right. one of the smiliest runners I ever saw. Right. But it's true. You know, that was something that my coach would always say to me, even in a mid-distance race. He would say, relax your face, relax your face. And it has a, a tremendous impact, particularly as we just saw. You know, this is a good example of that. Five hundredths of a second separating our top three men in that race. Every single percentage counts. So in our third and final section of the men's 200, we will have Jordan Thomas, Shalene Means, Adrian Canales, Ibrahim Fusseini, Kobe Hilton, Philip Marcel, and Chris Royster. Scheduled to go here in our Sea Heat, our third and final race at 200 meters. And I misspoke earlier. This is the section that Chris Royster is running in. Again, just a couple minutes more rest time between the end of his 100 meter final. And his 200, he'll go in lane eight, comes in with a 2080 personal best. Top time in this field belonging to Kobe Hilton from the United States in 2056. Means the only runner under 21 seconds so far in 2023. Clean start in our third and final section of the men's 200 meter dash. There's Ibrahim Fusseini of Ghana making very good ground running in lane number five. They make the turn, and it's still pretty even. There on the inside, Jaleen Means from the United States running very quickly in lane three, trying to catch Hilton. And in five, Husseini from Ghana, who ends up taking it in 2082, followed by Marcel from Grenada in 2094. So that was not only decisive, but I think that was a pretty noticeable let-up across that line for Husseini. It's a bit of a flex, isn't it, Will? When you can start <laughs> slowing is. down before you even get across because you're that confident of your victory and still a really quick time for him as well, despite that. So 2082 and a little bit of swagger there for Ibrahim Fusseini. About a tenth of a second ahead of Marcel. There you see that push across the line. And this is where you get a real sense of that relaxation. We're talking about relaxation again, and I think... It's uh, another great example of being rewarded for the counterintuitive aspect of relaxing in a fast sprint power race. Yeah, do they have an earpiece down there to hear us <laughs> talking about relaxing through the line? You calling yourself Coach Will? I mean, I know Serenity can hear us down there, but I don't know if anyone else can. That's I, right. We should test that out later <laughs> as we continue with 400s and 400 hurdles as all that's left here in our television window at the 2023 Music City Track Carnival. But winning the men's 200, that was Cravant Charleston running 2044, and he's downstairs with Serenity. My good pal here. Now, he was just telling me that he technically doesn't have training partners. His only training partner is Daniel Roberts, and he does hurdles. And you just open with a 20.4. So is that the secret, not having anybody else to run with at practice? Uh, not really. I mean, Daniel's still a great partner. I mean, in the fall training, man, whooping my butt. And, you know, he just pushed me to get better each and every day. Came with a great energy practice. When I'd be mad coming in practice, he had that same conscious smile. He's like, that's what I need. So uh, that's really different. Just been training hard the whole year with the without him. So I was just ready to go. Training hard and getting personal best all year. Now, you ran up windy, but 987 in the 100. So how were you just trying to translate that over into the 200 today? I was just saying open, making sure I get that same push in the beginning of my blocks, and then making sure that the 120, I hit it again, though, keeping that same rhythm the whole way through. All right. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you. All right, back here at the broadcast booth where the 400s and 400 hurdles are all that we have left. Everything over a full lap. Here as we continue at the 2023 Music City Track Carnival. And a fast women's 400 is on deck as our starters and timers will make their way from that back corner of the track over here back to the start finish line. And, Will, it is so hot that we've just had to employ the help of uh, a fan and as many cooling systems as possible. <laughs> but we're not going to let any of it point at the track because we want the heat to stay exactly where it is for these athletes. <laughs> right. It seems to be working out just fine for them. 
Yeah, it's certainly going well for the runners out of the track. I don't know if they're not thinking about it or, or, or noticing it. I, I would imagine that if we say that too loudly, we're going to have a couple athletes <laughs> come running up here with their spikes in their hands, ready to club us with them. <laughs> well, they, we've already established that they can hear you, Will. You've been oh, coaching from the broadcast. That's very true. So be careful what you say. We are about, what, 10 feet away from lane 8? <laughs> I mean, genuinely, it, we're quiet for the start up here, as any good civilized track and field fan is <laughs> supposed right. to be, of course. Yes. Uh, but <laughs> it's certainly... Uh, interesting here at Vanderbilt. We, we could have a conversation and reach out and high-five the runners at lane eight every now and then. Oh, see, that would be fun. <laughs> In fact, I think what we've got a fan now, but what we were getting was a burst of, of air movement as the sprinters were coming across the <laughs> right. line. That's how close they were. Trying to cool off all of our devices and <laughs> our hard-working crew that is helping keep us on the air here. Absolutely. In Nashville. Uh, this is the women's 400 that we've got on the track up next. And from inside out, a fantastic field where Chloe Abbott will run in lane number one. American with a personal best of 50-98 among the best in this field. Brittany Aveni, 25-year-old American, runs in lane two. Alexis Holmes will be in lane number three. She was a NCAA champion, a 4x400-meter runner with the Kentucky Wildcats a year ago. An All-American for... Kentucky running at three. Paula Moran from Mexico will be in lane number four. Nine-time Mexican national champion who made the semifinals of the Tokyo Games in 2021. Nicole Yergin, 25-year-old Brit, will be in five. First outdoor 400 of the year for her. She ran in that Tokyo final as well. Courtney Acolo, a Rio gold medalist on the United States 4x400 meter relay team. 29-year-old who is a legendary Texas Longhorn in this event will be in lane six. American Taylor Manson is in lane number seven, and Canadian Kyra Constantine will run on the outside of this field in lane number eight. Great field here, Kate, with speed of a bunch of runners that have won NCAA championships and have competed at the highest level for the U.S., Mexico, Great Britain, and Canada. Well, and this is going to be a bit of a Commonwealth rematch between Jurgen, the Brit, and Constantine, the Canadian. They had that memorable battle at the 2022 Commonwealth Games where the English team in the 4x400 meter women's race was given the win and then ultimately disqualified on British soil, unfortunately, and the Canadians ended up taking the victory there. So Constantine, lots of experience for her in this event. Again, as you mentioned, several Tokyo Olympic finalists in the 4x4 four four and the Open 400. And Courtney Acolo, who is a four-time NCAA champion at 400 meters. And from the American perspective, it, this is an event that the United States could call one of its best uh, throughout the years, going all the way back to Sonia Richards-Ross, Allison Felix, and the women's 400. Now, of course, I think Mo. Sydney McLaughlin, Delilah Muhammad, who's scheduled to be on the track here in just minutes in the 400-meter hurdles. An event that it, just making one of those relay teams and even just running in the first round, a, an incredible achievement, specifically here in the United States. Absolutely. So as we've done with our other events, we'll remind you that the World Championships standard for this event is 51 seconds flat. Again, certainly within the capability of several of these athletes. And Nicole Yergin did run 51.02 indoors. <sighs> That's awful close. Awfully close to 51 flat. Her personal best was two years ago in 50.96. As they walk back from those final runouts, and get ready to take one trip around this blazing fast surface. You're on West End Avenue in Nashville.
We've got NCAA champions. We've got world medalists. We've got one lap to decide it all from the 2023 Music City Track Carnival where Nicole Yergin in lane number five is out quickest through the first 100 meters here in Nashville. And Nicole Yergin running in lane number five, already making up that stagger on Courtney Acolo to her outside. Alexis Holmes running very quickly in lane number three, the former Kentucky Wildcat, as they make that long turn there on the home stretch. And it is still anybody's race as they race for the line. Courtney Acolo in there as well with Yergin still in the mix. And Holmes looking fantastic down this home stretch. Pardon the pun. She is powering towards that line, and I don't think she's going to be caught. And she won't. The 23-year-old American Alexis Holmes first to the finish, 50.58. A new personal best for the 23-year-old American. So personal best for our top two, 55-8, 58-5. And again, that means that both Holmes and Moran are under that World Championships qualifying standard of 51 seconds flat. Two more stunning performances in what has been a thrilling day of competition here in Nashville. 50-58 and 50-85. Terrific runs there in the women's 400-meter dash. As that finish was... Really never in doubt for Holmes. Did such a good job running that curve and speeding to the line. Well, and again, I know it's a relative term, but her endurance in this event really showed, as you said, over that final turn and into the last 100 meters. It's a bit back and forth before that, and, and you know, another example of why this level of competition just pushes every athlete to get every inch of their best selves on the day. So personal bests for each of the top three. That includes Courtney Acolo, who ran 51.81. You talk about the terrific career that she's had ever since she was a four-time NCAA champion in the 400 in Texas, setting a season's best here at 51.81, the personal best belonging to the top two of Holmes and Moran. Well, I wouldn't be surprised to see a repeat of some speedy action as we move into our pro men's 400-meter race set to take off any second here just a couple minutes behind schedule and it looks as though lanes one and two will be open meaning that Eric Cray of the Philippines appears to be a late scratch so here in this field of the men's 400 you'll see Isaiah Jewett a 2021 NCAA champion at 800 meters now competing for the United States running in lane three Evan Miller is in lane four Quincy Hall runs in lane number five. Quincy Hall, who is fifth at the USA's in the 400-meter hurdles last summer. Paul Dedewo, Javon Francis, and Bryce Dedman. Your field here in the 400. And as we get ready for quiet at our start line, that was a misspeak by me. That was Nathan Allen, who is the scratch, of course, the standout Eric Cray of the Philippines set to take to the track in the 400 hurdles next up. And they'll stand him up and try it again. So again, 45-0. That world champs qualifying standard. And we've got several with personal bests under that, but none this year. So from inside out, Jewett, Miller, Hall, Dedewo, Francis, and Deadman. And the men's 400. Off and running in the men's 400-meter dash, and there on the outside, quick reaction time from Paul Dedewo of the United States as they run through the first 100 meters. Pretty even so far with Evan Miller of the United States, the 22-year-old who made the SEC final running for South Carolina, starting to make up that stagger on Quincy Hall, the talented hurdler, to his outside. Halfway through, the strength starting to show. 
as they race for home and make the turn. Evan Miller with a slight advantage way on the outside. You got Bryce Dedman making good speed as well. And right there in the middle in the Carolina shirt, that is Miller, but it's Dedman there in eight who takes it in 44-72. Huge run by him, followed with a season's best by Francis at 45-10. Evan Miller, third, rewarded for his effort early on in 45-20, 45-29, another personal best for Isaiah Jewett, and then 45-35, a season's best, rounding at our field with Dedewo and Quincy Hall listed as a DNF. Yeah, unfortunate to see Hall take a fall there down the home stretch. Hope he's all right. Well, it looked to me like there might have just been a bit of contact and possibly some a lane violation there little bit of traffic coming off of that final turn. So 400s finishing up with the men's 400 hurdles on deck. The women's 400 meter hurdles, our final event here coming up momentarily, as well as a chat with our winners in the 400 coming up here in just a moment. Another quick shout out to our officials and our hurdle crew who so seamlessly get these things set up and taken down quickly in between events, making this track meet run so smoothly. Working hard in the heat, just like the runners, jumpers and throwers are, that's for sure. Making sure everything continues to run smoothly here in Nashville. Downstairs, Serenity Douglas is standing by with our women's 400 winner, Alexis Holmes. Now, I wish I could look this good. After running a 400 and personal best with a 50.5, how do you keep your makeup matted? Girl, the MAC setting spray, undefeated. I love it. <laughs> okay, and how are you feeling about that race? I feel really good. I'm excited. I came out here wanting to get a PB and have an, a good race, so I just can't wait to see what's next. Now, this is still your first year pro, so tell me how your training partners have really just helped you. Oh, they're amazing. The whole group is extremely supportive, very family-oriented, and training with them just keeps pushing me to be the best version of myself, so I'm really grateful. You finished so strong. Now, tell me how your coach has just been able to prepare you for a race like this. Yeah, I mean, the workouts are super tough. Um, I've been getting stronger in the weight room, so that helps. Lost some pounds, so, you know, just a combination of those things make for a good race like that. What's the worst workout? Repeat 1Ks. 1K. 1K, girl. But you know what? I made it through. And that's what matters. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Serenity, as we take another break. And when we come back, the men's 400-meter hurdles. Just one event left, two more races, and then we're done here in Nashville.
Back with you here in Nashville as we get you ready for the 400 meter hurdles. The men followed by the women. Each running in one section as we watch the 2023 Music City Track Carnival presented by Puma. The entire crew here at the Puma American Track League putting on another great event in Nashville and in the 400 meter hurdles. We've got great competition ready to go. In lane two, we've got Eric Cray, 34-year-old from the Philippines, the national record holder in this event, running 48-98. Shaquem Hall-Smith from the Bahamas, 26-year-old in three. David Kenziera from the United States, a semifinalist at last year's U.S. Champs in four. Jahil Hyde running in five. Quivel Jordan-Bacon in six. Chris Douglas in seven. Taylor McLaughlin in eight. So the Commonwealth Games runner-up from a season ago, Jaheel Hyde from Jamaica leads this field through the men's 400-meter hurdles. Our next-to-last event, and Hyde is out very quickly. Very quickly indeed, and he'll want to keep that rolling. The meet record is 48.80, and if he can go a tenth faster, he'll get that world champ standard of 48.70. So Hyde has made up the stagger on everybody but McLaughlin there way on the outside as Hyde continues to power away from this field, the two-time defending Jamaican national champion in this event. Way on the outside, McLaughlin going stride for stride with him. This is gonna be quick here through the final 100. McLaughlin on the outside and Hyde in the middle and at the line, it will be McLaughlin winning it. Out of lane number eight, the 25-year-old American running 48-38. Wow, huge time for him. I think I know another McLaughlin who runs the 400 hurdles who's I think so pretty too, quick Kate. as well. Season's best there for Hyde. A really tight finish for him. 48-57, then 49-04 for Kinziera. And those are your top three athletes all under 50 seconds. Here you see that replay head on. And like you said, Will, just absolutely neck and neck. And I, we were talking about relaxation earlier, and I think that McLaughlin just was able to hold that composure a little bit better across the line holding off his dip for the perfect moment and just taking Hyde by a few tenths of a second. So McLaughlin, the 25-year-old, it's a family affair at the 400 hurdles of the McLaughlin family. Of course, Sydney, the gold medalist and world record holder. We Taylor should, doing an excellent job here too. Absolutely, we should mention that is a new meet record and under that world champ standard. In fact, that's a meet record for the top two men. That, that's always hard when you, set a, when you <laughs> right. set, set a record, but you're the second person in the same race to do it. Absolutely right. As McLaughlin, the 25-year-old, wins there in the pro men's 400-meter hurdles. We've got one race left here this afternoon, Kate. That is the women's 400-meter hurdles on deck. Where we get ready to see a very fast field that take the track. Jamaican Andrinette Knights getting her warm-ups in right there in lane number four. An NCAA All-American in her time at the University of Virginia. Well, and that's why you'll notice, those of you savvy enough to see this, that this is the only event where we have the men go before the women. Um, you know, we want to save the best for last in this case. Right. Because back to your earlier point, Will, we just have so much tremendous depth in our women's hurdlers. One of the premier events in world track and field right now, to a large part because of Sydney McLaughlin and Dalila Muhammad. Those outstanding 400-meter hurdlers who have taken the world by storm in this event. We we're scheduled to see Dalila Muhammad run here in lane five of the women's 400 meter hurdles. But looking to our right, Kate, it looks like five and six will be empty here for our conclusion of the meet. And that's a real shame. Two very fast Americans, Muhammad and Cockrell, appear to not be starting this race. Excellent depth, depth nonetheless, but unfortunate to see those top two not competing. So that leaves the competition open for Antoinette Knight, the talented Jamaican. With a season's best of 54-9, a personal best that she ran last year of 53-36. 
Cockrell and Muhammad on a hot day in Nashville, not in lanes six and in lane five as we'd hoped. But still an excellent conclusion to a fast competition here this afternoon in Nashville where we've got an excellent field still ready to run. That's Daniela Rojas Gutierrez in one, Robin Brown in two, Deshae Wise in three, Andrew Knight running in four, Michelle Smith in seven, and Kamisha Chambers running in lane number eight. Internet Knight actually, incidentally, set her lifetime best on this very track last year at this meet. It did so in that competition that was won in a world leading time at the time by defending gold medalist and world champ Sydney McLaughlin. So the time to look for 54 9 0 to give yourself a shot at competing in Hungary. The last 10 days of August at those World Athletics 2023 World Championships. But of course, before we get there, we have to round out our TV window. The meet continues. The track will remain hot. But this is our final event of the 2023 Music City Track Carnival here at Vanderbilt University. Ready for the start. Antoinette Knight running in the light blue in lane number four. The runner watch in our final race. Clean start for the final time tonight at the 2023 Music City Track Carnival where Antoinette Knight of Jamaica leads this field of 400 meter hurdlers at night out very quickly as they race under the trees in the shade down there on the back stretch. Knight looking very smooth and calm as she powers away for the rest of this field middle of the track making up the stagger on everybody in this field with the exception of Michelle Smith way out there at the outside in lane number seven. Knight with a couple of steps on Why Wise there in three, the closest to her. But this is all Andronette Knight of Jamaica making a very difficult event look very, very easy here in the summer sun of Music City. Andronette Knight will be your winner in the 400 meter hurdles. As we check the time, 54.2 for the win with Wise in second, 56.07. So a season's best for Knight. Completely uncontested. And you'll see some of the effort showing there. Again, this is a difficult event. This is about the same energy system as running an 800 meter. And we know how challenging that's been in these conditions. But these athletes running incredibly well. In our final event of our live Peacock TV live stream window of the 2023 Puma American Track League Music City Track Carnival. So Knight is our final winner of the afternoon. But we've still got more for you here in these final 10 minutes as you watch the finish again. Smooth over the finish line. So before we get out of here and say farewell this afternoon in Nashville, we've got a very special guest who joins us trackside. We've got a gold medalist, a world champion, the one and only Athing Mo stands by with Serenity. Got it right on track. We have Bobby Kersey too. Okay, now you were listed for the 1500. You are. Now tell me why you did not run the 1500. I honestly didn't know I was listed, to be honest. But I think just this week we had a really great training, and after our Thursday or after our Friday run and workout, we just thought there's not really, you know, our legs are too heavy to be really going out there. But the girls did amazing. It was nice to run. I feel like I'm getting more and more into the 1500 as days go by so it's just nice to watch it and see where the girls are at i've been hearing about coach kersey's workouts i want you to tell me the worst one what's the one that would send you into retirement that's what i heard you say before <sighs> let's see 
I know I like just did a really bad workout, but I'm gonna say we have done three by 800 meters in practice before, and it was terrible because no one wants to do 800 meters multiple times, and that was probably the worst one. I had a terrible day after that. I was just, just trying to get into bed, be be sleeping, and just be done with the day, but. <laughs> Bobby killed me. <laughs> now the fifteen the 1500 world record was broken just last night. What do you think of it? I think it's incredible. It's insane. I mean, again, this year I've been getting more and more into depth into the eight, about the 1500, just watching how people run it, paces and things like that, and just training-wise as well. I think it's super incredible. I mean, it was awesome to watch. I was like on my toes. Um, but, I mean, I love the fact that Faith is able to change the sport and just change the way women really see the 1500 meters. Um, I hope, you know, now that I'm getting to the 1500 a little more, that, you know, hopefully one day I will be able to go out there and, you know, test it or, you know, just see where I can go with it. Where is Bobby's group headed after this? We're going to Paris, actually. We have some athletes running, competing, so we're going to go for a little training camp and just hang out there, enjoy the city for my birthday. <laughs> All right, a thing. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. See ya. All right, so there she is, the one and only Athig Mo, posing for the cameras and talking with our Serenity Douglas down there on the track. And, Kate, it's been so amazing to see what she's been able to do, a high school superstar growing into now just this incredible athlete. And we talk about track and field and the growth of our sport. And it seems like there are some athletes in every generation who transcend track and just become global superstars. That's what I think Mo is on the doorstep of now. She absolutely is. And I think, you know, we've been saying this throughout our broadcast, but we're seeing more and more about this with our young athletes, particularly in the U.S., and the depth and the talent, the maturity, the poise with which they're competing. And it really bodes well for the future of our sport, again, domestically and internationally. Ah Thing Mo, just an absolute inspiration. Doesn't matter if you're a sprinter, a distance runner, a field event participant. Uh, she is just an absolute uh, participant favorite and crowd fan favorite everywhere she goes. And we are really hoping that she's going to have a chance to run here on Tennessee soil at some point soon. Well, downstairs now we go from one of the best athletes to one of the best coaches in the game. Bobby Kersey standing by now with Serenity. Now you added some superstars to the equation. Where do you even go from here workouts wise? Well, I mean, I enjoy the workouts, and actually I enjoy the, the team that I'm coaching right now because they're getting along, they're helping one another, they're supporting one another, and they're really uh, doing a good job for me, uh, obviously. So it's making it fun. Uh, they're teaching me all kind of things about TikToks and all that, you know, all that other stuff or whatever. So uh, it's, uh, it's, it's almost like coaching back in time, really. You know, they're just so enthusiastic. They, like, they're just so talented, and, uh, and it's just, it doesn't feel like work. With talent like that, when you're writing those workouts, is the goal to make them want to quit? Well, it's not to make them want to quit. It's, it's make them understand that they got more in them and that, you know, that you have to set your standards high. You got to believe in yourself. And then more importantly, uh, you have to take it from practice uh, to the game and, you know, execute. And that's where I'm out here. I'm just out here looking to see whether or not they're executing their the game plan, the practice plan from what we've done in practice to, to the meet leading up to our nationals and into the world championship. Uh, everybody have a you know different schedule. I, I work them at a different schedule. I start my practices at eight o'clock in the morning, and I finish around two or three o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, uh, different combinations of workouts, uh, just like it, just like a track meet. But uh, you know, so but it, like I said, it's about execution. It's, I'm going to work them hard uh, because in order to make our U.S. team, it's difficult, and then for us to get to a world championship and try to medal, it's it's twice as difficult. Now, we have seen Sydney pull out of a race and a thing pull out of a race, but all they say is, in Bobby, we trust. How did you build that trust with them? Well, you know, because they know I'm looking for their best interest and that, you know, I know what, like I said, it comes from practice to me. And if I'm expecting something them in the meeting, if I don't have them ready, so why, why would I go ask them to do something that I know that they're not ready to do? And so uh, we're getting close. Uh, uh, Sydney should be running in the next week or so. I'm looking, hopefully, that uh, a theme will open up uh, in uh, New York in a couple of weeks. Uh, they're both on a world championship team already. And so it, they're really just starting to get into their season. And then they have a, still a season after the world championship. So, you know, they trusted in me in terms of that 
they know that they got a, a target on their back, there's people coming after them, and that, you know, they got to be ready when they step on the track, and it's my job to make sure that they're ready. If I don't see them that they're ready, I'm not going to put them on the track to ask them to do something that they're not ready to do. All right, last question. Who's the biggest headache at practice? Me. <laughs> I don't believe that. If anybody, no, because they, they're not going to drive me crazy. It's my job to drive them crazy. So, so. I know, that's right. All right. So, 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 so I, I might be the biggest headache on the track. They live home with headaches. Okay. Thank you, Coach. All right. Down there tracking down all of our athletes and a coach here at the end, doing it all here in the heat in Nashville. Final thoughts for the broadcast booth. Kate, this was an outstanding day of track and field, an outstanding weekend with Casey Lightfoot and the American record pole vault jump that he had at 19 feet 11 last night. A celebration of track and field from ages 2 to 50. It's been a lot of fun. It's been an absolute blast. It always is here in Music City. Lightning fast track, great competition. The fans absolutely love it. We had a high school record. We had an American record. We had more meet records than I can count, national records, and it's just going to keep rolling with our next stop on the Puma American Track League. That's right. The first weekend in August, we will be in Memphis for the Ed Murphy Classic. Looking forward to being there with you and uh, hanging out as the Puma American Track League season continues. So with that, we say farewell tonight from Nashville for Serenity Douglas, for Kate Van Buskirk. I'm Will Bowling saying goodbye from the Music City. We'll see you again come early August in Memphis.